sort ahead with the Ottawa TIA guidelines. So the city of Ottawa was similar to any municipality in terms of uh, performing traffic impact assessments. And uh, by really focusing mainly on vehicle traffic until the years 2016 slash 2017, when the city has restructured uh, the way they do TIA studies to capture an account for the different roadway users, um, such as um, cyclists, uh, transit users, um, uh, pedestrians, and so on and so forth. Uh, it even goes into studying um, to freight level, or not freight, trucks level of service and so on and so forth. So this includes a, an improvement on the process. Previously, what um, practitioners used to do is agree on the scope, like similar to what we discussed in an MTO study, uh, we would typically just look at the, um, uh, the client's request, build up a proposal. Once the client agrees on that proposal, we reach out to the municipality, can uh, agree on the scope, conduct the whole scope, and then submit the report to the municipality for review. However, the city of Ottawa changed this process to actually be progressive, um, interactive, more or less uh, reviews by first agreeing um, if there is a need to a TIA um, or not. If there is a need, what would be the scope? You submit a scoping report and then the city reviews it and then approves it if all is good and the uh, city staff is uh, in agreement with the proposed scope. And then you get to forecasting, the city reviews it again. And then you get to strategy where you actually do the analysis and the city reviews it again. So the process is quite a little, or a little bit more intensive in terms of timelines. Uh, TIA with the older um, system uh, used to take more or less a month to two months, depending on the complexity, sometimes longer for bigger projects. But with the process here, the timeline almost doubles. But the uh, improvement is you won't come at the very end of the study with uh, the municipality not agreeing uh, with the content of your study. The city of Ottawa starts the process with the first step referred to as screening. And I'll be zooming in to the process. The screening report is really providing a summary of what the development it is, the size, the number of units. You study the trip generation triggers. There are conditions, if these conditions are met in terms of the generated traffic demand that trigger a TIA. If these are met, a TIA is um, the, that of course uh, will be part of your screening report and you'll be continuing to the rest of the uh, steps. But if a TIA or a trip generation trigger is not met, you'll proceed to module 1.3 to check. Is the location of the development in an area of an interest to the city um, for, for the city's future plans? And if that's the case, um, yes, a location trigger is met and you'll have to proceed to the rest of the steps. If it's not met, you'll of course uh, proceed to the safety triggers and it's really, uh, Typical questions on safety, proximity to intersections, um, if you're using medium breakthroughs and so on and so forth. Um, if any condition is met, in that case, a TIA is uh, triggered. If it's not, that concludes your TIA form, you submit it to the city and your study is complete. If none, of course, of the triggers is met. If one of these triggers is met, you proceed to scoping. And with scoping, you determine well, you summarize really first existing and planned conditions. What's around my study area currently, and what does the city have in terms of plans for the area around the vicinity uh, of my area? Are there other developers doing um, developments too in the vicinity of the area? You determine your module 2.2, the study area and timelines uh, or time periods. Typically, for time periods um, and horizon years, and as per the Ottawa TIA guidelines, uh, the city of Ottawa likes to see the development studied at the build out year, at the year the development will be built and occupied. And in addition, five years beyond that point to ensure that future operations will be good and will be acceptable. Module 2.3, uh, we'll get into it when we get to scoping, uh, but it's really certain uh, parts or sub modules of the rest uh, forecasting and analysis that can be omitted if certain conditions are met or satisfied within the development. Once you are completed uh, the scoping report, you would uh, review it, sign it, uh, and submit it to the uh, City of Ottawa staff who would review it. And if they agree uh, with the proposed scope, you will be able to proceed to forecasting. 
if, if the city does not agree with your um, scoping report, they will come back with comments that you'll need to address and resubmit the report accordingly. Once everything is good with scoping, you proceed with forecasting. First, you look at your development. And again, I'm, I'm doing really a high level walkthrough. We'll get into every module and steps. With step three, you get into how much traffic is my development going to generate and add to the network. And then you assign that traffic to the roadway network. You also study the background network travel demand, the traffic that is already there in the roadway and are not due to your development. You will have to actually look at that traffic volume in the future and if you want to grow the traffic or not. And we'll, of course, get to the details when we get to that module. Module 3.3 is really a discussion. If things are over congested, what can be done about it? And if there are any potential reductions that are foreseeable in traffic demands that can be apl applicable um, to your study. Once that is complete, you submit or you prepare uh, documents, um, your report, and you send it to the city um, staff for review. Of course, the same as we discussed in step two, if the city has major comments, they will come back with um, a list of comments that you need to address and resubmit the report. If, there are, if the comments are minor, or if there are no comments, you can directly proceed to the step four, the strategy report or the analysis module. The first sub module of it is design review component, and you're really focusing on the boundary streets around, or actually focusing on the development itself. Development design, focusing on the boundary streets, parking, how much is parking is the development supposed to provide. Uh, you look into the boundary street level of service, I might call it development design in terms of accesses, and you get to the boundary streets level of service and you assess that, and um, you assess the access intersections. From both a traffic perspective using, typically it's using Synchro, but for you guys, you'll be using VSUM, or uh, as well for the multimodal level of service, and we'll discuss the how to do it. There is a quick uh, and easy uh, to use spreadsheet um, published by the city of Ottawa. Uh, that you guys will be using for your projects. The second component is really looking at the actual wider network. And that looks into traffic demand uh, measures um, that you can apply um, so you can reduce the impact of your development to the network. You'll be looking at the network uh, uh, traffic management. And if there are any conditions that would uh, result in significant traffic flows that will ultimately potentially result in changing the roadway classification or may have to do uh, or result in a change in the city's official plan or the city's transportation master plan. Typically, this module is not encountered frequently. Um, and typically, really, the city would come back and tell you there is um, going to be uh, major network uh, impacts at this location. Please include this module. Um, you get into discussion uh, into transit service that is getting into service your development. And uh, of course, if the developer has any agreements with OC Transport or uh, else depending on the size of the development, you work on network concepts and network intersections where you actually show the results of your analyses. You summarize all of that in a strategy report, submit it to the city. Um, city is most of the time, uh, most of the time will have a long list of comments on step four. Uh, but um, of course, it's for all comments that you address from the city or you get from the city of Ottawa, it does not mean that you have to address the comment uh, by actually um, doing what the city is asking you to do, but it's really um, comments for you to think about if you agree with this comment or not. And if, if, if the comment does not make sense to you and if there is a reason that this comment is not significant or um, you disagree with that for any reason, um, you can communicate back with the Ottawa or City of Ottawa staff and discuss that either on the phone or by email. Once you have completed step four and submitted your analysis or strategy report, um, if there are any recommendations coming out of your uh, studies, such as uh, roadway design modifications or uh, a monitoring plan that uh, shows if you reach certain condition of occupancy, um, do something with your development or um, start charging parking, stuff like this. So these get submitted as attachments to um, refer to as step five. 
the complete submission more or less. And that complete submission lumps up all these steps in one big report. So far, any questions with the 